I want to show you how I run my automation agency. No one really goes deep on this element of business, but I think it's very valuable for people to understand what's actually working. So you can realize it's not as daunting as you think. So I have these like five basics that I follow and you can use this as a kind of blueprint or you can add these into your business if you're currently up and running. But this is what's currently working for me. So feel free to implement it into your business. Number one is start where you are. When I first started working in automation, I was lucky enough to be in an industry where I could already see where automation could take over certain tasks. Working in the fitness coaching industry, Industry, there is a high volume of people that enter the business. It's just the nature of the business. People come in, they lose weight and they leave. Happy days. And I had my feet firmly planted in that industry and I'd been in it for a decent amount of time. And working as a coach for a company, I saw heaps of manual processes happening every single day, especially when it came to onboarding clients. I would see that sometimes clients wouldn't get started their first session under a trainer for close to 10 days. And there was a clear gap in that business. It was taking people almost 10 days to actually get started and starting to see results. And I thought, that could be solved easily with automation. What this allowed me to do was not sit there and think, what problem am I gonna solve with automation? Rather, there is a problem right in front of me that can be solved with automation. I know the impact of it and I know the fix. It's get people signed up quicker. So what I did was I took a business case to the owner and said, hey, I can fix this and I probably can get people started within one to two days rather than 10 days, would you like to try it? And he said, yes. And I was 100% correct. People now get signed up and started in training within that business within the first two days. The second step is understand what you actually do. This might be super contradictive, but I'm just going to say it anyway. When I was first starting out in the automation space, I had a meeting with an owner based on him asking for it. He'd heard about what I was doing through a friend and he wanted some kind of automation in his business. So I was super fresh to the automation space at the time. And I got talking about how automation could revolutionize his business essentially. Cause I knew the power of, it. and he was in fitness and I had experience there and I was talking all different kinds of things. And I went through all the tools and the features and what a webhook was and all of this back and forth about automation. And he looked at me as if I had a foot growing out of my head. I'd completely bamboozled him with techno babble and technical jargon that he just didn't understand what I was talking about. Looking back at that, I actually had made that same mistake when I first started coaching people in weight loss. I would try and explain to the person how specifically they were going to lose the weight, what the scientific function of weight loss was, the specific macros and why you had to eat certain things in order to get them over the line and educate them so much that they thought I was the right person to help them lose weight. But in reality, people wanted just to know, am I gonna lose 10 kilos or not? Am I gonna fit in my wedding dress or not? Am I gonna be confident enough to wear no shirt at the beach or not? And learning that lesson and then pivoting to selling people what they really wanted, which was the confidence of going to the beach or being confident in their wedding dress, that's what changed the game for me in selling weight loss. So I needed to do the same thing for automation. So instead of trying to explain all of the different tools and the functions, I started to ask more questions about what I could potentially solve for that business owner. Because just like the person who wanted to lose weight, the business owner has an end goal as well. And usually that is to make more money, save more time, or save them time and money. They didn't care about what a webhook was. Step number three is earn your right to charge. I 100% sold this from Hormozy, but I've been doing this since before I even knew who Alex Hormozy was. When I started out as a personal trainer, I had no friends and no family that I could bring in for fake sessions to make it look like I was busy, except for my girlfriend and she did heaps for me. So after training Emily for the fifth time in one day, I started to look at potential different options. And a mentor of mine at the time said, train people for free. And I was like super against this because I wanted to make money. I got into business to make money. But he kind of explained to me that you don't have any experience and you need to get busy. And the way that you can do that is by working for free. You can either do nothing or you could work for free. So I started offering to work with people for free. And I actually had a guy come up to me and ask if I was a new PT at the gym because he hadn't seen me before and I suddenly was wearing a Good Life t-shirt. And I said, yeah, I've just uh, moved here from Melbourne and I've started up as a personal trainer. And he said, well, do you want to train me? I said, sure. Can you meet me here at 6 a.m. tomorrow morning? He said, yes. I trained this guy for two weeks straight without asking him for any kind of payment until he asked me one day, dude, I feel bad. Can I start paying you for these sessions? And I was like, I guess so. Now I apply that same logic to automation. When I was working as a coach, I saw problems that could be potentially fixed with automation. I offered to solve them for free. The business owner accepted and I kept working for free until he asked me if he could pay me. The same thing happened again. Now, not everyone is gonna ask to pay you. Some people will just take advantage of you, but that's the kind of cost of doing business. And eventually you will hit one that does stick and makes you a lot of money. But if you are working for free, get the business owner to pay for the tools that you require. Now, in that time, I made mistakes. I made a lot of mistakes and more mistakes and more mistakes, but I got significantly more reps in as than if I just sat at home and thought about automation and watched YouTube videos about automation. I actually 
actually built some evidence that I knew what I was doing. And if I had gone to the business owner at the start with no experience in automation and said, hey, give me 10 grand, I'm going to automate your business, he probably would have just laughed at me and told me to go back to coach. But as time went on and I got more reps and I grew in the field, I gained more respect with the evidence of the results that I can provide. And that only comes from having skin in the game. Step number four is charge what you are worth. Now, once you've got past the working for free side of things, this is where charging what you're worth is super important. Because the number one question I get asked from agency owners is how much can I charge for a zap? And for a long time, I had no clue myself because I thought in order for me to charge a large amount of money, I had to complete a large sum of work and I had to put a lot of effort and time. In. But I was at a business seminar one weekend and I heard the story of the paper mill analogy. Now this has been butchered by me, so I'm sorry if I get this wrong. But there was a man, he was 70 years old and he was practically retired, but he worked part time at a paper mill and they only really needed him at certain times. And the time since they last needed him, a new owner had purchased the business and was running. And all of a sudden, one day, one of the big massive machines just stopped working and the owner freaked out. He knew he was losing thousands of dollars per minute, but everyone was kind of chill and they knew that you just kind of call one guy and he comes to fix it. The owner picks up the phone, calls this one guy and says, please come as quickly as you can. I'm, I'm losing money very quickly. The old guy realizes a new owner has taken over and he comes in and introduces himself as the old guy who fixes the machine. The new owner rushes him to the broken machine and says, please, I, I really need this back online and it needs to be fixed as soon as possible. The old guy with a piece of chalk in his hand and a hammer in the other, he draws a big circle on the machine and smacks the absolute crap out of the machine with his hammer. It fires back up and starts roaring and starts working again. And the business owner is absolutely beside himself with happiness. He says, thank you so much for fixing the machine. Please send your invoice through as soon as possible so I can pay it for you. The old guy chuckles, leaves and sends through his invoice the next morning. It's just noted with $10,000. The business owner gets the invoice and calls him immediately, absolutely blown away that the cost that only took this man a minute was $10,000. He demanded that he please send him a revised invoice with line items dictating what the service fee was for. The old man giggles and hangs up the phone and sends an updated invoice through. One piece of chalk, $1. One strike to the machine, $1. 50 years of experience of know to where to draw the chalk and strike the machine, $9,998. This story is one of my absolute favorites. And it shows that if we have the experience and technical ability to back up our work, we can charge whatever we want, especially if there's a need for it. Now, if you're fresh to this, you can't charge $10,000 straight off the bat. But as you build up your experience and you get your reps in, that will start to change. And if you get experience with specific problems in a specific industry, you can become the go-to guy to fix that specific problem. You can probably charge a lot more more than you ever thought you could. Step number five, and this is me really pulling back the cloak on my own business. At first, don't even bother automating your business. I think I speak for everyone who has run a small business or their own business that we all go through a phase of website and logos where we think in order to be successful, we need to have the best website and the best logo. Now, I feel this comes from a fear of inadequacy and we don't think like we are good enough to be in the position that we're in and we try to over amplify how professional we are to accommodate for the lack that we're currently feeling internally. Now, this is totally normal experience but for automation, we get it kind of twice. When I first started automating businesses, I would work on a bit of client work, realize the potential for something to be automated, then try and implement it into my own business. With my first three clients, I worked heavily with getting them new clients. With my first few clients, I worked with them to filter their lead flow coming into their business because they had quite a lot of leads coming in and they were just kind of sitting there, not being contacted quickly and kind of sitting there stagnant. And I thought to myself, well, I don't want my leads to be stagnant. Little did I want to admit I had no leads to begin with and I only had three clients, but I felt this need and urge to automate my CRM and make sure everything's in line, have the opportunities correctly set up and make sure that all the automations are in place. Just in case overnight, I get this miracle of a thousand leads that enter my business. And I'd spend a week going back and forth on YouTube, looking at tutorials, trying to find the most optimal best way for me to actually run my own business. But I had no leads to begin with. So it wasn't a problem that I actually needed to solve. For me, it was like cooking hot dogs in my kitchen, expecting thousands of people to knock on my front door. It just wasn't gonna happen. It didn't matter if I had the best hot dogs in town. No was coming to buy them. So instead of focusing on your business's automations, focus on getting more clients first and understand them on a deep level and fix their problems. And when the time comes that you have too much fulfillment work, you will have earned the luxury of automating parts of your business and you will know exactly when that time is. At least that's what's happened to me. The biggest thing that you are battling with in your business is not getting more clients. It's not service delivery. It's not the best automation platform for you to use for your clients. It's none of that. It's yourself. The challenge to show up every single day at one of the most difficult professions that anyone can ever follow will show you sides of yourself that you never thought you would ever see or even knew existed. And you need to be a little bit crazy for all of this to work. 
So that's why I feel like giving you the basics is going to help you accelerate that process. Because all of these lessons are lessons that I've learned myself. And they're all times that I had to really confront my ego and ask, was this the best thing for my ego or is this the best thing for my business to move forward? So if you're a little bit crazy like me and you want to make it work, make it work.